part of our Astro Guys road trip uh, on the way back from the Johnson Space Flight Center tweet up yesterday. And this is the Laser Interferometer uh, Gravitational Wave Observatory. It's a very unique L-shaped observatory uh, that there are two of in the country, one up in Hanford, Washington, and one down here in Livingston, Louisiana. So we thought we'd stop by here and check it out and see what they're doing here at LIGO. So uh, let's go in, shall we? We are at the top of LIGO, uh, Livingston, Louisiana. There's one of the arms. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm happy to talk with you anytime you want. You I have high school kids who I've adopted, and uh, yeah, I give them my card, and then I get to hear. I, there's one high school kid that's now uh, in college, and he's writing to me about what kind of research he can do whenever he goes into graduate school. First person, uh, the person that's our first line of defense for making sure everything's working is the operator. And today, uh, Danny is our operator. Um, it's like the Capcom equivalent. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And his job is to make sure the LIGO works on a day-to-day -day basis. So whatever, whatever caused us to not be able to have that light bouncing back and forth inside of our detector, whatever that was, he figured out if it's something that could be fixed or something we had to wait out. For example, if there was an earthquake on the other side of the world that was strong enough to shake us here, you just have to wait that out. We have yet to hire an operator that has control over the earth like that. That'd be great. Though. <laughs> yeah, it would be very cool. <laughs> or if there was a malfunction or if there was a big enough vibration here that caused us to go out of block, he will go ahead and try to Right here is what's going on right now. So about yeah. every minute or so, you'll see this move over to the left. Right. Going this direction is going back in time, and this is 12 hours ago. And okay. This is six hours ago. It's the same way for every single one of these. This seismometer here shows us things like people getting up in the morning and going to work, and all of those trucks on the road. You actually see the difference at the time, exactly. like rush so hour. Hours ago, you see rush it was hour. Very quiet because people were at home and they weren't bouncing down the roads. Even though we say, as physicists tell this to everybody, that every force or action has an equal and opposite force or action. We say that, we know it, but sometimes it's really hard to believe that every bump that you feel on the way here, the Earth felt that exact same bump. Yeah, you push back. Yeah. So it's not as noticeable for the Earth. It's much bigger and much heavier than we are, but it's still felt it. And all of those tractor trailers, vans, buses, trucks, anything out there on the road, then every bump they hit adds to this increased vibration. So this will stay elevated like this until about 6 or 7 o'clock tonight. And it'll go back down just like this started rising up. Now you'll see there are some sharp spikes in it right here. Yeah. On your way here, you may have, did you come on the interstate? Yeah, we came on I-12. Okay, so whenever you went on the 63, you had to make that weird turn to stay on the 63, yep. and you had to turn at a fireworks store. Yep. Right behind that store is a tra or train tracks. When you went over those, you felt a bump. Oh, yeah. You yeah. added all of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, see, that's a right. wonderful example. Yeah. <laughs> but these spikes here are showing you when a train went over top, went over the railroad tracks. Oh, wow. So whenever I have a student, in here, I call, tell them without a video camera, without so microphones down there. I can tell you when a train goes across those tracks, it's about four and a half miles down the road, just by watching the there are seismometers that are feeling the vibration of the earth right here. And take a left and don't but you can't get. <laughs> Someone will stop you. Yeah. So inside this room in there, the room um, is gone. No, the, I don't. Well, you're not armed. Uh, not it's for you. If somebody's armed, I don't want to know about it. So, anyway, <laughs> this is Livingston Parish. It, let's let that's why I'm saying nobody would know we don't have guns around here. <laughs> so inside that room, that's uh, in the larger corner uh, building right beside us, is where the laser is generated, and our okay. vacuum starts right here. Um, those. Pink plastic covered rooms. Those are our clean rooms, like you saw across the, when we were across the street. These ones just happen to be pink. No. So the laser starts here. Doesn't help me. Trust me, it continues on underneath there. And this is where some of the most important parts of LIGO are. This is the corner of our L shaped detector right here. So the laser comes in this direction. It hits a piece of optical equipment called a beam splitter. And it's the first time I've ever heard a scientist or engineer name a piece of sophisticated equipment with an obvious name. 
We always like making people think we're smarter than we are. <laughs> Bean splitter. Bean splitter. That's yeah. Yeah, exactly no, what it says it does. I've heard that term. Half the light goes through the beam splitter. It continues down this arm here. And that continues outside for two and a half miles or four kilometers. Okay. The other half of the light is reflected off the beam splitter. It goes out this arm. It continues outside for four kilometers. That arm would be the arm that's directly in front of us. The other arm that I showed you is the arm that goes directly out toward us. And then the light comes back inside these containers. Inside these containers are those mirrors that intercept the light before it can recombine. Yeah. And then the resonant cavity, the, where the light bounces back and forth, is between this mirror right here and the mirror at the end station, which happens to be this mirror for this arm. And for this arm, that's this, this control center. And all of these numbers here are telling you what number this part is in its CAD drawing. Oh, okay, so that would be the blueprints for that one. Piece exactly, of, okay. and th that is what this engineer is working on. Each of these engineers are specializing in something, what you're seeing outside that window there. These are the new seismic isolation upgrades that are going in inside of the detector, and that's an entire other engineer's, uh, engineer's work. This is considered uh, If you look right in the back there, you might see a guy that's uh, all guarded up in white. And that's the uh, suspension that he was drawing on his whiteboard. Oh, so you can so he didn't have to wait for all the stuff to come. All the stuff is here. here. So we do contract out. Um, we have a very um, precise specs. So if Shaw can't deliver those specs to us, um, we are able to use them. But we do build prototypes first, and that's what they're working in the world. Yeah. Wow, wow. Um, that's impressive. Sustained. I, I know, but, but, but Mike Myers um, said. Technically, they can grab us now because of the chambers being opened and, and um, um, closed. They're actually falling below sometimes the ultimate event. All right, so as you can see, we learned a little bit about physics and astrophysics today and what they do in places here like LIGO. And I hope you learned a little bit today too. So this is Dave Dickinson from astroguys.com just saying that gravitational waves are just plain cool.